ज्ञान चिमरा ज्ञानाजन शवाखया चक्षुन्मीलिटना तस्मा श्री गुरव नम नमो विष्णुपादा कृष्ण प्रेषा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांड स्वामीन इति नाम ने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश चारिणे नाद पी सुनी चे चौरारी वहिष्णुना हमानी ना मान देन कीर्तनीय सदा हरि हर नाम हर नाम हर नाम आव केवल कदौ नास्त्यव 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 गतिर्थ्रीकृष्णचन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास आदि गौ भक्ता वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे everybody may krishna bless you protect you and maintain you tonight i'm doing one of my favorite sections from the sri chaitanya charitamrita which is from the adi leela chapter 9 the tree of devotional service whenever i read this chapter i become very much enlivened and enthused and encouraged those of us who chant the 
Gayatri mantras given by Srila Prabhupada, we see this word prachodayat, to become enlivened, to become enthused. So let us pick up and we will begin. You can follow along on the screen. The Chaitanya tree, the author Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami writes, let me offer my respectful obeisances unto the spiritual master of the entire world, Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by whose mercy even a dog can swim across a great ocean. All glories to Sri Krishna Chaitanya, who is known as Gora Hari. All glories to Advaita Acharya and Nityananda Prabhu. All glories to the devotees of Lord Chaitanya, headed by Srivas Thakur. In order to fulfill all my desires, I remember their lotus feet. I also remember the six Goswamis, Rupa, Sanatan, Bhatta Raghunath, Sri Jiva, Gopal, Bhatta, and Dasa Raghunath. It is by the mercy of all these Vaishnavas and Gurus that I attempt to write about the pastimes and qualities of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Whether I know it or not, it is for self-purification that I write this book. Now, I have included an excerpt from Prabhupada's purport because this is an important point. I have selected certain purports in this chapter for emphasis. So Prabhupada writes, this is the sum and substance of transcendental writing. One must be an authorized Vaishnava, pure and humble. One should write transcendental literature to purify oneself, not for credit. By writing about the pastimes of the Lord, one associates with the Lord directly. One should not ambitiously think, I shall become a great author. I shall be celebrated as a writer. These are material desires. One should attempt to write for self-purification. It may be published or it may not be published but that does not matter. If one is actually sincere in writing, all one's ambitions will be fulfilled. Whether one is known as a great author is incidental. One should not attempt to write transcendental literature for material name and fame. Krishnadas Kaviraj continues, I take shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who himself is the tree of transcendental love of Krishna, its gardener, Malakar, and also the bestower and enjoyer of its fruits. Lord Chaitanya thought, My name is Vishvambara, one who maintains the entire universe. Its meaning will be actualized if I can fill the whole universe with love of God. Thinking in this way, Lord Chaitanya accepted the duty of a planter and began to grow a garden in Navadweep. Thus, Lord Chaitanya brought the desire tree of devotional service to this earth and became its gardener. Lord Chaitanya sowed the seed and sprinkled upon it the water of his will. All glories to Sri Madhavendra Puri, the storehouse of all devotional service unto Krishna. Madhavendra Puri is the desire tree of devotional service, and it is in him that the seed of devotional service first fructified. The seed of devotional service next fructified in the form of Sri Ishwarapuri, and then the gardener himself, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, 
became the main trunk of the tree of devotional service. By his inconceivable powers, Lord Chaitanya became the gardener, the trunk, and the branches simultaneously. Paramananda Puri, Keshava Bharati, Brahmananda Puri, Brahmananda Bharati, Sri Vishnu Puri, Keshava Puri, Krishnananda Puri, Sri Nasringa Tirtha, and Sukananda Puri. These nine sannyasi roots all sprouted from the trunk of the tree. Thus, the tree stood steadfastly on the strength of these nine roots. With the sober and grave Paramananda Puri as the central root and the other eight roots in the eight directions, the tree of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stood firmly. From the trunk grew many branches and above them innumerable branches. Thus, the branches of the Chaitanya tree formed a cluster or society with great branches covering all the universe. So at this point, I have included one particular anecdote that Prabhupada put in his purport to this verse. He writes, Our International Society for Krishna Consciousness is one of the branches of this Chaitanya tree. So I add, we should feel very, very confident and very, very happy to know that we are a branch of the Chaitanya tree. Krishna Das Kaviraj continues, From each branch grew many hundreds of sub-branches. No one can count how many branches thus grew. I shall try to name the foremost of the innumerable branches. Please hear this description of the Chaitanya tree. At the top of the tree, the trunk branched into two. One trunk was named Sri Advaita Prabhu and the other Sri Nityananda Prabhu. From these two trunks grew many branches and sub-branches that covered the entire world. These branches and sub-branches and their sub-branches became so numerous that no one can actually write about them. Thus, the disciples and grand disciples and their admirers spread throughout the entire world, and it is not possible to enumerate them all. As a big fig tree bears fruits all over its body, each part of the tree of devotional service bore fruit. Since Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was the original trunk. The taste of the fruits that grew on the branches and sub-branches surpassed the taste of nectar. The fruits ripened and became sweet and nectarian. The gardener, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, distributed them without asking any price. All the wealth in the three worlds cannot equal the value of one such nectarian fruit of devotional service. Not considering who asked for it and who did not, nor who was fit and who unfit to receive it, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu distributed the fruit of devotional service. One as as aspect of the purport I included here, this is the sum and substance of Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement. So in Iskan, Prabhupada taught us this, that when it comes to preaching, especially when it comes to book distribution, we do not make any discrimination. We do not calculate who is fit and who is not fit. We give Prabhupada's books, we give the Krishna Prasadam, to anyone and everyone. We are following directly in the footsteps of Lord Chaitanya. The transcendental gardener, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, distributed handful after handful of fruit in all directions. 
And when the poor hungry people ate the fruit, the gardener smiled with great pleasure. Lord Chaitanya then addressed the multifarious varieties of branches and sub-branches of the tree of devotional service. So we must keep in mind that the words of Lord Chaitanya are exactly the words of Krishna because Lord Chaitanya is Krishna himself, not an incarnation, but exactly Krishna. So just as we take the words of Bhagavad Gita verbatim and we make the words of Bhagavad Gita our life and soul, similarly, we should take these words of Lord Chaitanya as our life and soul. Since the tree of devotional service is alaukika, transcendental, every one of its parts can perform the action of all the others. Although a tree is supposed to be immovable, this tree nevertheless moves. All the parts of this tree are spiritually cognizant, and thus as they grow, they spread all over the world. I am the only gardener. How many places can I go? How many fruits can I pick and distribute? Prabhupada now comments. This indicates that all classes of devotees should combine to distribute the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra without consideration of the time, place, or situation. And this is what we do in ISKCON all over the world. All kinds of devotees, they distribute this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It would certainly be a very laborious task to pick the fruits and distribute them alone. And still, I suspect that some would receive them and others would not. Therefore, I order every man within this universe to accept this Krishna consciousness movement and distribute it everywhere. So this is the same thing in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says to Arjuna that everyone should surrender unto Krishna. That is real religion. So in the same way, those who are devotees of Krishna should accept this instruction of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and distribute Krishna consciousness everywhere without discrimination. I am the only gardener. If I do not distribute these fruits, what shall I do with them? How many fruits can I alone eat? By the transcendental desire of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Water has been sprinkled all over the tree, and thus there are innumerable fruits of love of Godhead. Distribute this Krishna consciousness movement all over the world. Let the people eat these fruits and ultimately become free from old age and death. So yes, Prabhupada had the same idea. That's why Prabhupada called it the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Prabhupada wanted Krishna conscious temples and preaching centers all over the three world, all over the world, all over the world. And there's no limit. I myself have said many times in lectures, just see in your San Diego, how many Starbucks stores there are. So in the same way, there should be innumerable preaching centers of Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada comments here, those who are actually servants of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu must seriously distribute this Krishna consciousness movement all over the world to render the greatest benefit to human society. If the fruits are distributed all over the world, my reputation as a pious man will be known everywhere, and thus all people will glorify my name with great pleasure. Here is Prabhupada's comment on this. 
This prediction of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is now actually coming to pass. The Krishna Consciousness Movement is being distributed all over the world through the chanting of the holy name of the Lord, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And people who were leading confused, chaotic lives are now feeling transcendental happiness. And I myself exactly fall into this category. This purport was written sometime 1973-74. And I exactly at that time, 1973, I was confused, chaotic. But fortunately, I came upon Prabhupada's books. I came upon Prabhupada's devotees. I came upon Prabhupada. I came upon Krishna Prasadam. And as Prabhupada writes here, now feeling transcendental happiness. That was almost 50 years ago. And somehow or other, I'm still feeling transcendental happiness. They are finding peace in Sankirtan. Just like there in San Diego, you have Vijay Das. You ask him, does he find peace in Sankirtan? And he will tell you, oh yes. That's why Vijay Das goes out and distributes Bhagavad Gita. Because he finds peace in Sankirtan. And therefore they are acknowledging the supreme benefit of this movement. This is the blessing of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His prediction is now factually being fulfilled. And those who are sober and conscientious are appreciating the value of this movement. So now, now comes, comes a very, a very famous, famous shloka Prabhupada, Prabhupada quotes many, many times, times in, in his books. Bharata Bhumite Huila Manusha Janmaja Janma Sarthataka Kari Kara Pada Upakar. One who has taken birth as a human being in the land of India, Bharata Varsha, should make his or her life successful and work for the benefit of all people. Now the next shloka is from the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Etavaj janma safalyam dehinam iha dehishu pranayar arthayar diya vacha shreya acharanam sada it is the duty of every living being to perform welfare activities for the benefit of others with one's life, wealth, intelligence, and words. So this is Krishna's instruction, which we should take very, very seriously. We should perform welfare activities for the benefit of others. So topmost, you give your life. You surrender to Krishna. You become a full-time preacher in the Krishna consciousness movement. If you can't do that, then give your wealth to promote Krishna consciousness. If you can't do that, use your intelligence to help the Krishna consciousness movement. And if you cannot do that, then use your words. Tell others about this Krishna consciousness movement. So now we will study Prabhupada's purport on this verse. There are two kinds of general activities, shreyas, or activities which are ultimately beneficial and auspicious, and prayas, or those which are immediately beneficial and auspicious. For example, children are fond of playing. They do not want to go to school to receive an education. And they think that to play all day and night and enjoy with their friends is the aim of life. Why, even in the transcendental life of Lord Krishna, we find that when he was a child, Krishna was very fond of playing with his friends of the same age, the cowherd boys. 
Krishna would not even go home to take his dinner. Mother Yashoda would have to come out to induce him to come home. Thus, it is a child's nature to engage all day and night in playing, not caring even for one's health and other important concerns. This is the example of prayas, or immediately beneficial activities. But there are also srayas, or activities which are ultimately auspicious. According to Vedic civilization, a human, <laughs> a human being must be God conscious. One should understand what God is what this material world is, who one is, and what their interrelationships are. This is called Shreyas, or ultimately auspicious activity. In this verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said that one should be interested in Shreyas to achieve the ultimate goal of Shreyas or good fortune one should engage everything, including one's life, wealth, and words, not only for oneself, but for others also. However, unless one is interested in Shreyas in one's own life, one cannot preach of Shreyas for the benefit of others. So here we can see that the devotees of the Krishna Consciousness Movement are extremely liberal. Liberal in the sense that they have no selfish motive for living. Devotees live to serve others. Devotees live to give Krishna to others. That is how we are ultra-liberals. We have no personal desire we simply want to give Krishna to others. The purport concludes, the Bhagavatam says that it is the duty of an advanced human being to act in such a way as to facilitate human society's attainment of the ultimate goal of life. Now, Lord Chaitanya includes this verse from the Vishnu Parm uh, Purana. Praninam upakaraya yad eveha pura, paratracha karmana manasabacha tad eva mati man bajet. By his work, thoughts, and words, an intelligent man must perform actions which will be beneficial for all living entities in this life and the next. Same thing I just said. We live to serve others, but we are not foolish. We are not concerned with the material situation. We want to give everybody Krishna consciousness, Shreyas. We want to give everyone the highest welfare benefit. Prabhupada now comments, the Krishna consciousness movement is the only hope to direct the attention of intelligent men to a greater benefit in life. Because Prabhupada taught us that if you do material welfare work for the benefit of others, and there are so many movements and societies who are already doing that, so that benefit that you give for someone's material benefit is limited and temporary. But if you give someone Krishna consciousness, that is an eternal asset. That is an eternal benefit. So Prabhupada pointed out that to give Krishna consciousness is the topmost welfare activity. First of all, you're giving the topmost thing, Krishna. And whatever Krishna consciousness you give is a permanent asset. If you give some material benefit, it is limited and temporary. Lord Chaitanya continues, I am merely a gardener. 
I have neither a kingdom nor very great riches. I simply have some fruits and flowers that I wish to utilize to achieve piety in my life. Although I am acting as a gardener, I also want to be the tree, for thus I can bestow benefit upon all. This next verse is also from Srimad Bhagavatam. Aho esham varang janma sarva pranyu pajivinam su janasyena yesham vai vimuka yanti nartanaha. Just see how these trees are maintaining every living entity. Their birth is successful and their behavior is just like that of great personalities. For anyone who asks anything from a tree never goes away disappointed. Prabhupada now comments. This verse, quoted from Srimad Bhagavatam, was spoken by Lord Krishna to his friends when Krishna was taking rest underneath a tree after his pastime of stealing the clothes of the gopis known as Vastraharana Leela. By quoting this verse, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaches us that we should be tolerant like trees and also beneficial like trees, which give everything to the needy persons who come underneath them. A needy person may derive many advantages from trees and also from many animals. But in modern civilization, people have become so ungrateful that they exploit the trees and animals and kill them. These are some of the sinful activities of modern civilization. This reminds me of somewhere else in this Adi Leela, when Lord Chaitanya is explaining <coughs> the third verse of Shakshastakam, and also when Krishnadas Kaviraj is explaining the Harinam Shloka, which I chanted at the beginning. And Lord Chaitanya gives us proper tree meditation. It is pointed out that the tree, it gives and gives and gives. On a hot summer day, we take shelter of a big tree, and so the tree gives us nice shade. We take from the tree its fruits and flowers, branches and twigs. So the tree is simply rendering service to everyone. And the tree is so tolerant that even if the tree is dying of thirst, it does not even ask for water. So this meditation on the tree provides a very good thought pattern for the devotee, that we are meant to give shelter to others, that we are meant... Oh, and another thing Lord Chaitanya points out, in that the tree, when it's full of fruits and flowers, its branches bend low because it's overburdened by fruits and flowers. And so the tree presents itself very lowly because of so many fruits and flowers. When a tree has no fruits and flowers, the branches stand tall and proud. So how do you can tell who is a great devotee? You can tell who is a great devotee because they're so full of the fruits of love of Godhead that they are overburdened and it forces them to present themselves meek and humble, lowly. Whereas the non-devotee likes to present himself as proud and strong and virulent. But the devotee is meant to be meek and humble like the tree overburdened with fruits and flowers. Prabhupada comments, it is the desire of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
that the benevolent activities of the Sankirtan movement, which was inaugurated 500 years ago in Navadweep, be spread all over the world for the benefit of all human beings. Prabhupada also writes, the followers of Lord Chaitanya must execute his will with heart and soul, being more tolerant than the trees and humbler than the straw in the street. Yes, Lord Chaitanya reminds us that the third Shikshastakam verse should be worn around our necks for constant remembrance. So this is the essence of that third Shikshastakam prayer. We are meant to execute the will of Lord Chaitanya. He already mentioned it. Lord Chaitanya wants <coughs> everyone to help spread the movement of love of God, Krishna consciousness, in whatever way you can, to whatever degree you can, but we must give it. And at the same time, more tolerant than the tree because in the blistering hot sun, the tree does not protest. When it is cold and windy and icy, the tree does not protest. It remains tolerant, so tolerant. So in our pushing on the Krishna consciousness movement, we must also be very, very tolerant and humbler than the straw in the street. Krishna Kas Kaviraj now comments, the fruit of love of God is so delicious that wherever a devotee distributes it, those who relish the fruit anywhere in the world immediately become intoxicated. This is something I very much appreciate. Becoming intoxicated in Krishna consciousness. My first experience of becoming intoxicated with Krishna consciousness was the first day I visited the temple when they gave me Mahaprasadam. And I jumped up and said, please, give me more, give me more, give me more. And I was told, if you want more Prashad, you have to come back tomorrow. And so I started to visit the temple as much as I could because I wanted that prashadam. It was so delicious. It was so intoxicating. Prabhupada now comments, here, the wonderful fruit of love of Godhead distributed by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is described. We have practical experience that anyone who accepts this fruit and sincerely tastes it immediately becomes mad after it and gives up all bad habits, being intoxicated by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's gift, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. The statements of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita are so practical, anyone can test them. Yes, this is the sign how advanced you have become in Krishna consciousness. If you really have a taste for Krishna consciousness, you give up all your bad habits and you become more and more absorbed in transcendental spiritual practices. Prabhupada continues, as far as we are concerned, we are most confident of the success of the distribution of the great fruit of love of Godhead through the medium of, medium of chanting the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishnadas Kaviraj continues, the fruit of love of Godhead distributed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is such a great intoxicant that anyone who eats it, filling his or her belly, immediately becomes maddened by it and automatically chants, dances, laughs, and enjoys. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the great gardener, 
sees that people are chanting, dancing, and laughing, and that some of them are rolling on the floor, and some are making loud humming sounds, Lord Chaitanya smiles with great pleasure. So this is the intoxication I was hinting at. This attitude of, this is Prabhupada's comment, this attitude of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very important for persons engaged in the Hare Krishna movement of Krishna consciousness. In every center of our institution, ISKCON, we have arranged for a love feast every Sunday. And when we actually see people come to our center, chant, dance, take prasadam, become jubilant, and purchase books. We know that certainly Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is always present in such transcendental activities, and he is very pleased and satisfied. Therefore, the members of ISKCON must increase this movement more and more according to the principles that we are presently trying to execute. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, thus being pleased, will smilingly glance upon them, bestowing his favor, and the movement will be successful. So all over the world, we are now waiting. When will Krishna sanction that we can once again have big Sunday love feasts? This pandemic has put a great uh, burden upon all the temples. And as you know, even your own temple, you cannot have the regular Sunday feast. So we are simply praying to Krishna to please deliver us. We want to be able to give the Sunday love feast to everyone. So dear Lord Krishna, please remove this pandemic so that we can execute the order of Lord Chaitanya and have worldwide Sunday love feast once again. Krishnadas Kaviraj now says, the great gardener, Lord Chaitanya, personally eats this fruit, and as a result, Lord Chaitanya constantly remains mad, as if helpless and bewildered. Prabhupada comments, it is the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to act himself and teach the people. Lord Chaitanya says, Apani achari bhakti karila prachar. One must first act him or herself and then teach. This is the function of a real teacher. <coughs> Unless one is able to understand the philosophy that one speaks, it will not be effective. Therefore, one should not only understand the philosophy of the Chaitanya cult, but also implement it practically in one's life. Krishnadas Kaviraj continues, With his Sankirtan movement, Lord Chaitanya made everyone mad like himself. We do not find anyone who was not intoxicated by his Sankirtan movement. Persons who had formerly criticized Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, calling him a drunkard, also ate the fruit and began to dance, saying, Very, very good, good, very, very good. good. Prabhupada now comments, When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu started the Sankirtan movement, even he was unnecessarily criticized by Mayavadis, atheists, and fools. And so naturally, we are also criticized by such men. There will always remain and will always criticize anything that is actually good for human society. But the preachers of the Sankirtan movement should not be deterred by such criticism. Our method should be to convert such fools gradually by asking them to come, take prasadam, chant and dance with us. This should be our policy. Anyone who comes to join us, of course, 
must be sincere and serious regarding spiritual advancement in life. Then, such a person, simply by joining us, chanting with us, dancing with us, and taking prasadam with us, will also gradually come to say that this movement is very good. And yes, that is what happened to me. Exactly. But one who joins with an ulterior purpose to get material benefit or personal gratification will never be able to grasp the philosophy of this movement. So before I entertain questions and answers, I would like to chant. And I see Usha. Very nice to see Usha and Danavari Dasi. Thank you for joining the uh, program today. So I chant for all the devotees that they can achieve pure love of Godhead. Namaste Narasimhaya Namaste Narasimhaya Prakhlada Klada Dayane Prakhlada Klada Dayane Hiranya Kashi Purvaksha Shila Tankana Kalaye Singa, Padato, Nasringa Yato, Yato, Yamitato, Nasringa Mahi, Nasringa, Ridae, Nasringa Nasringa, Adim, Sharanam, Prabadi Nasringa, Adim. Sharanam Prabhade Nasringham Adin Sharanam Prabhade Urjeshwari Dasi Jai Tavakara Kamala Vare Nakam Adbuta Sringham Dalita Iranyaka Shibu Shabadrita Narahadi Bhupa Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare Keshavadrita Narahadi Rupa Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jai Jagadish Hare Jai Jagadish Jai Jagadish Jai Jagadish Hare Jai Jagadish Hare Jai Jagadish Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Danavari Dasi, please show your screen so I can give you a personal blessing. Jam Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Pari Brajaka Charja. Astotra Sattva Sri Srimad, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrindi Ki Jai, Nama Chaja Haridas Thakura Ki Jai, Prem Sekoho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadad Hara Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrindi Ki Jai, Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopinath, 
श्याम कुंद उड़ान कुंद गिरी गोवृदान की जाए वृंदावन धाम की जाए नवद्वीप धाम की जाए भक्ति देवी की जाए तुलसी महारानी की जाए यमुना देवी की जाए गंगा देवी की जाए समवेता भक्त वृंद की जाए All glories to the devotees of Iskan San Diego. All glories to the devotees of Iskan San Diego. All glories to the devotees of Iskan San Diego. All glories to Sri Sri Guru and Goranga.